the worst wood to film with ever. Can't get anything satisfying out of it. Hello there, stay a while and listen. It's Deckard Kane, Diablo, 1998. Um, we have got the Microtech SOCOM on the reviewing table today. Thank you very much to Brian. Brian is a, a trusted uh, gear lender. He knows how I think about, um, about loaners and things like that, and that is generally keep them sparse, don't take too many at a time, and um, yeah, just let me know if you need them back. Because um, yeah, I, um, yeah I, I get offered a lot, and it's really nice that people offer me, but it's just, uh, as well as things like the postage being so much to send things back and forward, um, it does eat into the channel funds a fair bit as well, but um, I like to just have a few things on deck at once, as well as any edge testing that I'm doing as well. So thank you, Brian, for being cool and understanding and keeping me stocked with very cool, very interesting knives, just like this one, to, to have a look at. What do you reckon about the SOCOM? How do you think it looks? Um, this to me is, I think it has like a steampunk aesthetic to it, perhaps just owing to the tan color, but the sort of open hardware, the exposed sort of, the way that the, the frame, the, sorry, the line lock is bolted into the frame, just the general sort of odd, but uh, yeah, kind of, uh, I don't know, conflicting appearance of the, uh, of the various parts all coming together to be something that's relatively cohesive is, I don't know, without getting too art school on you, I think it's got a nice kind of aesthetic, to be honest. Um, but this knife is certainly not about aesthetic. This knife is sold as a soldier's style knife. This is a tactical knife, a tactical folding knife. Um, and yeah, whether or not that is an actual purpose, but I know there's a fair amount of the knife community that just, you know, that makes them feel good. It makes them feel, having a knife that is somewhat combat focused gives them a bit of a buzz. So, you know, cool, cool. Uh, and that's definitely what they're going for here. A, a harder use knife that is sort of able to pry, able to you know, perhaps uh, be used for a longer period of time um, uh, against, you know, sort of repetitive cutting tasks. And also just having things like cool deployment, um, great action, all that sort of stuff that, uh, you yeah, know, the EDC crowd does like as well. So I would say not the most successful EDC knife, just a couple of things about it that might even be apparent in this picture, make it sort of not the best uh, EDC knife, but um, it'll do that job and it'll do other harder jobs really well too. But to formally introduce the blade, let's start it off with a uh, size comparison. So that's about how big the thing is. It's a larger knife, it's a thicker blade, it's a stout blade. This thing sort of sits with me in the AD10 crowd of knives. The action is a little bit more fluid perhaps, uh, and it's perhaps got a little bit more of that higher end um, fanciness that may even stop people from using it in a, in a hard use way. But again, that's probably what I would liken it to the most. If you like things like the AD10, uh, this might be a, a knife that you'd want to look into. 300 US dollars is what, it, is what it costs, which is a fair amount of money, but you're getting an American made knife with some pretty premium uh, materials presented to you in a way that, um, well, the thing about premium materials is that you can present them in a few different ways. And they've, um, of course, I'm getting mainly towards the blade steel here, the 20 CV blade steel. They're presented in a way that is for this knife and perhaps not for knives that I'm usually fawning over. So I'll speak further about that later, but on paper, you are getting some good stuff in there as well. You're getting a warranty, all the good stuff from, you know, American manufacturer, if that is part of your team and whatever you, however you see that. So there is some benefit to, to that for the price, but um, it is a pricey knife and you can't really get around that too easily. So let's break down the attributes and see which, um, you know, what I think of each different part and we'll talk about how the steel did in the cut test. We'll talk about how the handle manages. We'll even broach a bit of a tip down carry discussion. So uh, let's get into it. So we're going to start by talking about the blade. So the blade is made of CPM 20 CV, which is a pretty premium American steel. Um, you're going to have when it's presented at a sort of a, in a thin blade at about 61 Rockwell, you're going to have some pretty excellent edge retention. This is presented at about 59 Rockwell, I believe, in quite a thick blade, quite thick behind the edge. And as such, uh, the edge retention part of the, um, the knife edge isn't particularly, um, you know, the primary focus here, nor is it uh, particularly successful at holding an edge against the twisted sissile rope 
for too long. So in my cut test of this, it cut 180 times on its factory edge. That's very much middling. That's about what S30V gets, in fact. But that being said, it's on quite a thick edge that whilst it is sharp right at the apex, it's there's some sort of quite, um, quite broad um, geometries right behind it. And it's quite easy to make an edge like this become like this, rather than it make an edge like this become like that. It's, it takes a bit more work. So that's why I would say the edge retention result isn't as amazing. And this is something that I need to probably think back on my old ZT tests for. And perhaps, perhaps I was, um, yeah, that was before maybe I started thinking about the applications of blade steels at geometry rise rather than just, you know, why isn't everything cutting well if it's on, you know, a blade of that steel. So anyway, I digress a little bit, but uh, definitely a thought there. The attributes of the 20 CV that they're going to be harnessing in this blade are its relative toughness, its very excellent stain retention, and yeah, its edge retention is still pretty good. 180 cuts through twisted sisal rope is still pretty good, and it enables them to present you to uh, present to you a thick blade that will still cut, you know, relatively well. I was really happy to see after I'd done my cut test that it stropped back really well on a strop and was back at paper slicing sharp once again. So that was really cool. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the overall combination of blade steel, blade shape, blade grinds, and all that sort of thing when keeping in mind the purpose of the knife. And that is doing probably repetitive rough cutting jobs. So rough cutting, what are we getting for that? We're getting a handle that grips very well. You've got a handle style of you know relative neutrality with a couple of flourishes. And the flourishes I really like. This handle, when you grip it, every single finger is engaged with something. They're all doing something. So your three fingers here are all sitting across this, this sort of asphalt surface finish inlaid into the handle, the aluminium handle scale there. Your index finger is riding this sort of index uh, guide here. And your thumb is sitting on the very kind of generous jimping on the back here. It's nice and thick. It's nice and wide. It doesn't, it's not like rough and tears up your hand, but it's tactile and it sits well. So the closed, you know, the standard grip, close your hand around it. It's comfortable and I can definitely say that it's comfortable use for long term and short term cutting. A lot of everyday carry knives not too bothered about how comfortable they are to hold and use them for a good long time. This one does quite well at that. It's definitely up there with your 80, 10s and your cold, uh, so Spyderco Shamans and that sort of thing for a good long term using uh, folding knife handle. And they are rarer than you would think that they are. Uh, fixed blades, not a problem. Folding knives, getting around the challenges and the machinery that needs to be put in, um, it can sometimes be a bit of a challenge, and I think Microtech have done a pretty good job of overcoming that with this handle here. The overall strength of the knife seems quite good. You can see here, the liner lock is as thick as some frame locks you get. It's a really thick piece of titanium fixed to the inside of this handle here. Uh, and yeah, it locks up to about 50-50 and it is, yeah, it's a, it's quite a, a stable lock knife. And you've got these two thumb studs here on either side which double as blade stops. When the knife fires open, they contact this aluminium here. And what they also do, as pointed out by Nero in a video he did recently, they provide extra uh, rigidity this way and this way as well. So this truly is a knife that if the tip isn't a giveaway to you, you could probably use to start separating things in a prying motion as well as in a slicing motion. So um, definitely on the stronger side in terms of blades. That being said, uh, over my relatively standard use, I have noticed a bit of a start developing. And I'm not sure if that is the titanium on the lock uh, being, you know, it is obviously softer than the uh, than the blade steel, perhaps it's that. It isn't anything that makes me think the knife's ever gonna close, but it's definitely a slight tick, 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 tick. I don't have a Torx bit to be able to tighten this up. <laughs> it's like a T12 or a T14 Torx. It's a big Torx that you need to get to that pivot. Uh, when I send it back to Brian, I'll be interested to hear if he is able to just tighten that up again and it's fine. Uh, the pivot doesn't feel like it's coming loose. I can't move it with my thumb or anything like that by putting like my thumb fat into the pivot hole. So I, I really don't know, but there's just a little bit of like, okay. And I haven't particularly hard used this knife. I've just opened it, closed it, and just used it for basic EDC stuff and a bit of testing. So interesting, but overall the robustness of the knife doesn't seem to be too far in question, but there is that. So Fool and Franks, that's what you got. Let's look at it like this. This is the view that will be sticking out of your pocket. And this is where we start talking about tip down only carry. 
Now, the real floor of this knife is in this. Tip down only carry. Yeah, that's right. So basically, you are gonna be losing hours of your overall life deploying this compared to a, um, a tip up knife. So let me demonstrate just roughly to, just to show you how, you know, how massive the difference is, all right? So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna pull the knife from my pocket, I'm gonna make a cut in this piece of cardboard, and then put the knife back in my pocket. And I mean, how long's the video going for? It's, I mean, it's already, it's already a 15 minute video, so I mean, I'm sorry if this blows it up to 45 minutes, but I feel like it's worth making the point. So um, I tell you what, we'll start with a tip up knife. So we'll start with what I'm familiar with, and then we, you know, we'll try and catch up to that blinding speed uh, with the, with the, the Luddite's uh, Microtech there, so three, two, one, go. Alrighty, so that was a few seconds. Um, I'll swap back to the Microtech. Now, um, I've, I forgive you if you like you get bored during this and you go away to make a drink or something and you come back, because I'll probably still just be like mid-motion, so I mean, maybe don't make yourself like a full-on teapot, if maybe I put a teapot on, but if you just want to go and microwave something like during the, the wind up of like of the fumbling, then by all means I don't blame you at all. So let's get into it. Oh. Oh. So there is maybe a half a second difference between deploying, oh. I have a lot of people I need to apologize to. So yeah, I don't have a problem with it being tipped down for its deployment speed, its accessibility, but there is certainly a lot of knives sticking out of your pocket uh, when you are carrying it around. And there's no moving or changing anything, that is just what you get. So a consideration for everyone and definitely for the lefties uh, out there. Whilst you can deploy it just fine with the left hand, um, you know, obviously you're going to be pulling the lock from the other side if that bothers you. Um, but you know what? I'm sure you could just have it in your pocket and just correct it as you pull it out, so whatever. But uh, just definitely a consideration, there isn't a huge amount of customization <laughs> available to you there. So yeah, as an everyday carry knife, it does a little bit probably, uh, does it, uh, intrude on you just a little bit more than I would prefer. Just a lot sticking out, it's quite thick as well in the pocket, which is great for ergonomics, but uh, you know, for carry every day, a little bit less. The pocket clip is great, it's really well done. It's just a sprung piece of steel, which I like. Uh, it's got a good uh, spring to it, a good ramp to it that isn't a paint scraper, but definitely decisively gets over a pocket lip. And that does really well too. So I really do enjoy like how it slides in and out of the pocket. It's just once it's in there, it's a little bit big and thick and sticks out a bit too much, but there you go. As for the deployment though, I don't know, man. Tip down, tip up. Whew. If the knife fits in your pocket, all right, it's probably not as big a deal as I th once thought it was. So there you go. Moving to the back, again, a Marshall sort of it, uh, purpose behind this knife. You've got a, I guess it's a glass breaker. It's an interesting glass breaker. It's not sharp like a lot of glass breakers are. It's just like a little ball bearing. Uh, inside a steel collar. Um, and yeah, the knife actually functions really well fitting into your hand in this roll too. So this broad surface here, your thumb rides really well across that. And it's actually, the chamfering's done quite well so you don't even feel like you're digging into an uncomfortable channel either. So holding it like this, as Lim Thompson say, you can use the blade or you can use the, the pommel for mercy. So if you wanna dish out like eight strikes of mercy to someone's, you know, crown of their head, then yeah, you might do worse than getting this knife because this is you know, quite a comfortable uh, glass breaking grip or whatever. So uh, I would not recommend breaking glass with a knife like this because people in a panic have often have a tendency to over strike and cut up their hand. I've seen that numerous times in the work that I do. Um, and that's using things like um, even using you know, custom made glass breakers that have the handguard in them as well. You still get people often have wrist cuts and things like that. And these are, these are firefighters and people from response units and things like that that do this more than a couple of times in their lifetimes. And they still, every now and then, uh, they usually wear big thick sort of canvas uh, overalls and such. But even then still, you do see the, the possibilities for injury. So I probably wouldn't recommend using a knife as a glass breaker. Unless of course it is that sort of fabled emergency that 
a lot of guys kind of almost hope that they're going to come across in their lives at some point or another. But yeah, it's a um, it's there. It would probably work. It's comfortable to use, but I wouldn't recommend it. So there you go. Um, overall, this is an interesting blade that I wasn't sure that I was going to like at all, but I have ended up quite fancying. I, it was interesting following on the heels of the AD-10. This is kind of like a, a streamlined version of such a knife. Probably not as absolutely rock solid strong as a, a triad lock is, but uh, if you're after something that does those kind of big knife jobs, uh, it's comfortable in your hand. It looks pretty cool. It's got really good action. And I mean, this action is like a gun. It's got recoil on this, like it's a real solid thwack when you launch it open. Very, very cool. And yeah, there is a slight kind of tremor. You feel it reverb through the knife. I think it's a really cool feeling. It's a big heavy blade. It's going to work with its pivot really well to fly open every time. So it's got all those sorts of things going to it, going for it that some of the heaviest, heavy duty, uh, heavier duty cold steels perhaps don't. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, I don't think I would buy one. I think $300, I probably wouldn't see that manifest itself in joy for me. I'm really glad I've tried it. I'd recommend it to people who are after something like this. I'm just never really after anything like this. That's the main thing with me. But if you are, it's well built. Uh, it is it's wearing quite well. Um, apart from that little clicky clicky, which may just be a pivot issue, I'm not sure. Um, the aluminium in general is holding up really well to pocket wear too. Uh, I just noticed at the top here where the, um, the stops continuously fall into their slots, you're getting a little bit of uh, degradation there, but that's just to the anodization and the aluminium under it is fine. It's a really well done knife. It's an odd knife. It's again, as I said, kind of like steampunk looking, funky looking blade. Some people are gonna think it's ugly as sin. My wife thinks it's ugly as sin. I think it's quite cool. And uh, yeah, just uh, premium materials done in a, as I said, a bit of a, a different way from a different point of view. But uh, I mean, the rough value is there possibly, given what people are paying for other knives that are of probably less complexity and also um, more, uh, yeah just intangible such as perhaps like a Chris Reeve or something, which is still 150 US dollars more than this uh, for probably a less, you know, a less expensive blade steel and you know, titanium handles. So about the same probably material cost, but an extra 150 for a Chris Reeve large Spencer, for example, just kind of makes you think a bit, that's all. So in terms of its value, I don't think it's terrible value. I still wouldn't say any knife that's $300 is, you know, a great deal, but, you know, whatever. If you want something that is, that sort of scratches your uh, martial knife itch, but is also a good user, you can use it for a long time, uh, it'll cut just fine in the short term. You might have to either reprofile it or just sharpen a little bit extra for even given the steel it is, then you can go a lot worse than this Microtech SOCOM manual knife. So I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and thank you all for watching. I'm trying to keep my material up as best I can, but as I said, life's been a bit busy lately and just a few things going on. So thanks again. I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta.